Okay, let's try and make sense of the most simple case of a line charge. So we have a charge represented by this line that is length L and um, it's a uniformly distributed charge okay? and uh, it's a positive charge. So we know that um, we're trying to determine what the electric field is at this position x naught and we know because this is a positive uniformly distributed line charge that our electric field is going to be going off towards the right at this point x naught. Um, so this particular we picked a, a, a point randomly that will um, locate along this charge called x naught x prime and x prime has a width of dx. Okay, at that point we're looking at a little tiny slice. Okay, and because we have a uniform distribution, we have a really easy formula for our um, linear density, and that's just going to be lambda equals q over l, keeping in mind that the entire charge of this object is q, sum of the charges. Um, so, f and this is going to be in uh, coulombs per meter. Okay. So, for example, if I had 15 coulombs of charge on this entire line, and the line were f um, five meters long, then the linear uh, charge density would be three. So, if you gave me a little slice of some length, um, for instance, dx then I could multiply it by 3 and tell you exactly what the um, charge was over that small length. Okay, So in fact, let's look at that. We're going to call that dq, dq prime. In fact, we'll call both of these prime. Everything that's associated with this point, we'll call prime. dq prime equals lambda dx, right? It equals that linear mass density times the length dx prime. Okay, so now we're ready to examine E, that the electric field that is caused by this little tiny point uh, dx along L. Okay, so that's not going to be E total, it's going to be dE. Okay, the little differential of, of E caused by uh, the point dx. And this is going to be um, using uh, Coulomb's law, right? K, Q, and in our, in our specific example, the charge is represented by dQ prime. dQ prime, and the length is going to be uh, squared. The length from here to here is just x naught minus x prime x naught minus x prime, and that is squared. Okay, so that this formula gives us, in fact, the magnitude, and we already know the direction is directly uh, straight to the right, so it's in the i hat direction. Um, so now we want to figure out how to sum up every little slice that we could possibly come up with um, along this line L. So we're going to use integration. We're going to integrate from 0 to L, and we're going to use this little formula, k d q prime over x naught minus x prime squared dx. Okay, and now there are some substitutions and methods for solving this problem that are going to make it easier. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to say for here that u, we're going to use u uh, as a substitution for this um, denominator. u is going to equal x naught minus x prime. The derivative of u, because we're doing a substitution, x naught always stays the same. So x naught is actually a constant. Derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of x prime is the derivative of x prime, and it's going to be negative. So this is going to be negative dx prime. 
Okay, so now let's plug this substitution back up into our formula and we'll rewrite it. Now at the same time I'm gonna replace dq prime with lambda dx prime. Okay, they equal the same thing. And so we'll do that. Zero to L of K lambda. And I'm gonna pull the dx out into the front. Uh, towards the end, I guess, dx prime. And now we'll plug in x minus x prime, or u, right? We're going to plug in u, um, but I'm going to move it upstairs. So here, we would tip, if we were just using this, we'd call this u squared. I'm going to call it u to the negative 2. And then I want to plug in, um, well, I need to have dx in the equation, or I need to have du in the equation, and du is negative dx. So I'm going to make this negative, and I'm going to have to put a negative out here. Okay, negative 1 for now. So we can clean this up even further by moving the constants out. k and lambda are just constants. So we're going to make this negative k lambda times the derivative from 0 to L of u to the negative 2 minus dx. Okay, And I'm going to come over here so I don't run out of space and we'll solve this. So what, do I, what would I have to have in order to get a derivative uh, of u to the negative 2? Well, I'd have to have u to the negative 1. Okay, So u to the negative 1 is 1 over u. Right? So I've got negative k lambda um, times, now it's actually not 1 over 2, right? It's negative 1 over negative 2. Uh, negative 1 over um, u. And the reason for that is, uh, well, just test it. If we had, if we were to take the derivative of u to the negative 1, we'd bring the negative 1 in front, which would make it negative u to the negative 2. And we want u to the negative 2. So if we make this negative to begin with, then um, everything works out. So we get 1 over u um, uh, evaluated from 0 to l. Okay, And now we can rewrite this. The negatives are going to cancel, um, so we'll get k lambda times, and I'm going to plug in for u x naught minus x prime now. So I get 1 over x naught minus x prime evaluated from 0 to l. Okay, and maybe I don't want to have parentheses on there, but we'll just leave it. Okay, so now we want to plug in L and then uh, subtract 0. So remember, we're plugging in to x prime. x naught is a constant. x prime is what's moving around. So we're going to get um, k lambda times 1 over x naught minus L minus 1 over x naught, right? Because when we set this to 0, it goes away. This can be rewritten further by distributing k lambda uh, into both of these. So we'll put k lambda in um, over x minus x naught minus l minus k lambda of x naught, and this can be even further simplified by making uh, the denominators like by multiplying by 1. So we'll multiply this side by x naught. So we'll get x naught k lambda over x naught times x naught minus l minus, and we'll multiply this side by x naught minus l over x naught minus l. 
and we'll get x naught minus L times k lambda over uh, x naught times x naught minus L. And then if we distribute the k lambda on this side in, we're going to get um, x naught of k, sorry, x naught k lambda of x naught times x naught minus L minus k lambda x naught minus k lambda L over x naught x naught minus L. And then if you look at this, now we have the same denominators. So we have x, we have this, and then this minus here makes this negative and this positive. And so these two cancel. And we're left with k lambda L. Well, remember what lambda is, right? k and lambda, if we go all the way back up to the top, lambda equals q over L. Okay? So I'm going to plug q over L in for lambda. And then there's L here over the uh, denominator. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the denominator. And so the L's will cancel, and you'll get kq over x naught, x naught minus L. Okay?